In these videos, we're going to be covering a topic in organic chemistry. We're going to be talking about how to draw resonance structures. Um, drawing resonance structures can come up in a general chemistry course as well, but we're mainly going to be looking at this topic from the perspective of organic chemistry. Now, students usually first learn how to draw resonance structures near the beginning of the first semester of their organic chemistry class, uh, but my experience is that a lot of students do not learn that topic very well. Um, and that's really a shame because resonance is a topic that does not go away. Resonance um, is important in many, many different areas throughout both the first and the second semester of organic chemistry. And if you never really master the skill of drawing resonance structures, you're going to be greatly handicapped throughout your entire OCHEM class. Uh, so I hope that a lot of the students that are watching this video are students who are at the beginning of their OCHEM class and uh, maybe have had a little trouble with the idea uh, with the techniques for drawing resonance structures and I hope that these videos will help you to learn that material better so that it will help you in the rest of your course. However, it's possible that some of the people watching this video may already um, be in the middle of the first or maybe in the middle of their second semester of organic chemistry and maybe you're starting to realize um, that it's really hurting you that you never really mastered the skill of draw drawing resonance structures in the first place. Even if you are already deep in the middle of your organic chemistry class, even if you're in the second semester, it's well worth the time to go back and learn once and for all what a quick and efficient and um, reliable way of uh, drawing resonance structures is. Because as I said, this is a topic that's really fundamental to a lot of other areas in organic chemistry. If you understand how to draw resonance structures, that will be a big help in many other areas. And if you cannot easily draw resonance structures, that, as I said, is going to be a big handicap throughout your organic chemistry class. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of these videos by going to my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. And here also is the address of my site, www.freelance-teacher.com slash video dot mht freelance-teacher.com slash video dot mht or again you can just click on the link in the info box. These videos are intended to help students who are finding this material to be difficult. So I'm going to be going through the material very slowly, I'm going to give lots of examples, and I'm going to repeat myself a lot. And hopefully all those things will help to make these videos more helpful to students who find the material to be difficult. The flip side of that is that if you don't find this material to be difficult, uh, you might be very bored uh, by watching these videos. Well, that's okay. In that case, maybe um, you would prefer to learn the material in some other way. Maybe just by going to class or even just by reading your textbook. Uh, but the intended audience, again, for these videos is students who are finding the material to be difficult. What does resonance mean? Well, we use the term resonance when there's more than one Lewis structure for a molecule. Resonance means that there's more than one Lewis structure for a molecule. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have a acetate anion. Now notice in this acetate anion, um, that we've indicated the formal charges. So I hope that you've already uh, learned the technique of assigning formal charges. This oxygen over here is a normal double bonded oxygen with two lone pairs. Well, as I said, that's the kind of normal state of oxygen. The normal state of an oxygen is to have two lone pairs and two double bonds. So that would be a neutral formal charge. You can see we didn't put any formal charge on that oxygen. On the other hand, this oxygen is a little bit abnormal. It only has one bond and it has three lone pairs. And you can work out that that would mean that it would have a negative formal charge. Again, I'm assuming that you've already learned how to assign formal charges earlier in your, in your OCHEM class. And also you should have learned about that in your general chemistry class. So you should be able to confirm that this has zero formal charge and that this oxygen has a negative formal charge. But something you might wonder about is why should we put the negative charge and the single bond on this oxygen and the double bond on this oxygen? Why couldn't we have drawn the single bond on this oxygen and then the double bond would be on this oxygen? There doesn't seem to be any reason to prefer putting the negative charge in one place rather than the other. Well, that's really a correct argument. 
Um, it really would be appropriate to draw another version of this Lewis structure where the double bond is on this oxygen and the single bond is on this oxygen. So let's show how we can use the concept of resonance to draw that other Lewis structure. Well, a tool that we use in drawing, uh, in, that we use in drawing resonance structures that you've probably already seen is electron pushing arrows. Well, we want to take this negative charge and move it in this direction. So let's take this lone pair. And why don't we take the lone pair and turn it into a pi bond over here. And then we can take this pi bond and turn it into a lone pair on the oxygen. And I hope you can see that that will essentially cause these two oxygens to switch places as far as their roles in the Lewis structure is concerned. Well, here's the other resonance structure that we get if we move the electrons around in this fashion. So you can see that we took this lone pair and we converted it into a pi bond. So the lone pair is gone and we've converted that into a pi bond. Now, in a sense, this oxygen now has lost some electron density. You can see that these electrons are moving away from this oxygen. So it's going to become less negative and it ends up with a zero formal charge. On the other hand, we took this pi bond and turned it into a third lone pair on the oxygen. So the pi, uh, the pi bond is gone here and instead there's a third lone pair on the oxygen where you can see, according to this arrow, that the electrons are moving towards the oxygen. The oxygen is gaining electrons, so it shouldn't be surprising that it's going to go from a neutral formal charge to a negative formal charge. And now we can see that, um, um, as we were uh, attempting to do, we basically switched the roles of the two oxygens. In this diagram, this oxygen had the charge and this one was neutral. But it's just as valid to draw a Lewis diagram where this oxygen has the negative charge and this oxygen has the neutral formal charge. So these two structures would be referred to as resonant structures of each other. Let's talk a little bit about um, notation. When we draw resonance structures, we always indicate the relationship between the resonance structures by a double-headed arrow. When you're drawing two resonance structures of the same compound, you should put a double-headed arrow in between them. So make sure you're using the right type of arrow. You should not use a single-headed arrow. That's the arrow we just use for a normal reaction. This is the arrow we would use for a reaction, not for resonance. So you can see we're using a double-headed arrow, not a single-headed arrow. Here's another type of arrow that we wouldn't use. I hope that you recognize that this type of arrow indicates a reaction that's going to equilibrium. So this is an equilibrium arrow. Well, again, that's not appropriate for resonance. Resonance is not a reaction, and resonance does not involve the concept of equilibrium. So this is the correct type of arrow for resonance. It's also common when you draw resonance structures to enclose all the resonance structures in brackets. I'm not always going to do that in these videos. Sometimes I will and sometimes I won't. Um, but when you are drawing resonance structures, sometimes it's convenient to enclose them in brackets to separate the resonance structures from the other parts of the problem that you're working on. For example, that helps to distinguish the resonance structures from the reactions that are happening in the problem. 